Boom. What's up, y'all? My name is Ian Edwards, and welcome to the Soccer Comic Rant. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, you're listening on, on Omni Studio, iTunes, uh, where else are we at? Allthingscomedy.com. And if you go to allthingscomedy.com, which I'm looking at right now, it's a pod- podcast platform with podcasts for some of the best comics in the goddamn world. We have Bill Burr. We have Alonzo Bolden, Breaking Bread with Tom Hopper. The Burt Cast with Burt Kreischer, uh, John Reap, Country Ish, Devil's Advocate, uh, Rosebud Baker, and uh, list goes on and on. Uh, Ron Funches, Getting Better, uh, it's a podcast platform. Check it out. And Burt and Kreischer and Bill Burr have a podcast there also. Eric Griffin, I could keep reading, but then I'd run out of time to do this podcast. So just check out on. Uh, allthingscomedy.com and uh bobby lee tiger belly is also there uh sponsor for the podcast is uh on the volley apparel.com if you go to on the volley apparel.com they got tees tanks hoodies jerseys sweatshirts and uh use my promo code code comic rant and you get 20 percent off and all the jerseys and t-shirts and tank tops have like uh hip-hop soccer logos and emblems on them and uh yeah a lot of designs make you feel nostalgic for soccer and for and uh yeah so just check out on the volley apparel.com and uh let's hit up the guest that we have here today uh martin might join us he might not he says he's on a set of a movie and uh, he just tells us that every week so he sounds important but we'll see if he joins us and uh, we have Lee Hudson, a uh, stand-up comic from Britain, a Southampton fan. And uh, Southampton and Manchester United faced off this weekend, so we're going to get into that. What up, Lee? Hey. Yeah, he's got a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Neil Lukaku Shakovati. Hey. Chelsea fan, uh, by way of India, lives in San Diego, stand-up comic. Big, huge smile on his face, like they won the league already. Type of smile, <laughs> <laughs> trying to contain his excitement for the terror that uh, his team is about to wreak on the league. Hey, I'm I'm finally confident, so it should <laughs> that should be a good thing. <laughs> Why are you confident about your team after everybody else? Right, what's took you taking you so long? Because I had to like I had to finally see somebody score a tap in which is, seemed to be the biggest uh, problem in our team. Like when mm-hmm. we, we, we create and we couldn't really put the ball back in the net. So it was fun to see. You didn't spend a hundred million uh, on a person that can't score t- tappings. You know, Lukaku can score tappings. Yeah, I mean, he can do a lot more than that. I get it. Yeah, yeah. But like, uh, this is good to see. Like we finally had a striker who was probably our best player of the game. Yeah, I like... It's been a while. It's funny to see. He's like a movie striker. You ever see those movies Mm -hmm. where somebody wants information out of somebody? So the big (laughs) guy grabs the guy by the shoulder, by his collar, and lifts him up off his feet, (laughs) which is what he did to Pablo Mari, like for most of the game. It was like, tell me where the goal is. That way, throw him out the way and then take the shot. And just. It's just stupid. Go ahead. I've got a theory because Ben White missed that game with COVID. Mm. Um, and I think when he heard that Lukaku was going to be starting that game, he just went around that week just mouth kissing strangers, <laughs> like someone, <laughs> someone give me COVID. I do oh, not yeah. want to play against oh, this guy. Oh, yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. What would you rather have, uh, COVID or Lukaku? COVID. <laughs> COVID. All right, well. You can you can recover <laughs> from COVID. I think I think if he had faced because I think Pablo Mari's career at Arsenal is now done. Yeah, he, that could have been Pablo, Pablo Marco will never white. recover from Lukaku. Yeah, like he's exactly. memed for life. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, well, Ben White, Ben White's missing the city game too. So yeah, he he got he got both of them out of the way. He's a he's a method actor. He wants to commit <laughs> to the fact that he had COVID. He doesn't want people to believe that <laughs> what we are talking about right now is true. He's like, nah, you know. A few weeks from now, they'll see. But, you know, I'm glad Ben White is paying off. Like him, he, he, he played the same this week as he played last week anyway. 
Yeah. And he didn't play at all this week. So yeah. Good. But uh before we get into those games, let's talk about like some uh transfer news, some big transfer news, and we just were talking about it. Mm-hmm. And it's this Mbappe thing. So uh Real Madrid just offered PSG how much? 160 million euros for Mbappe, who is in his Mbappe. last year of his contract. Yeah. And uh Everybody knows, like you were saying, Neil, that that's where Mbappe wants to go. And he's willing to go there and take less wages from what I just read from the blurb that I've read. He just, he wants out of PSG that bad. Why does he want out of PSG that bad? And will PSG sell him? I think, you know, uh, it's, I, I, I don't think it's anything new, right? Like all these, you know, when you get to that real galactical level, it kind of seems like Barcelona and Real Madrid are the destinations for such players. And um, although the shine has kind of been kind of be taken off these two clubs over what has happened with their financial difficulties in the last uh, year or so, but I think they sold the Real Madrid project to Mbappe. It's been in the works for a while now. I think, I mean, uh, today I was actually reading folks, you know, these in the know, people who, who kind of claim to have inside information. And most of them are trash, but you know, some once in a while, some of them- hey Man, don't talk case. about me like that, bro. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, so uh, uh, some of them have actually been talking about a, the, you know, this chain of events. And, um, the, the fact that Madrid's probably got a couple of players lined up who they want to do this to, like um, get uh, get Mbappe uh, fairly cheap. Um, this could also be a pressure tactic. That, yeah. So that they know that, okay, he's he's now gone. He's, he's gone. Like, you better take the money now or he's gone next summer. For free. For free. Uh, there were rumors in the summer they're trying to do something similar with Pogba because he's also entering into his last year. Yep. He's uh, in his last year. Contract. He's, he's in his last year. So, uh, yeah, they could be doing something like this. Um, again, it really doesn't make sense. Like, um, if you are talking about a 21, 22 year old, which is what Mbappe is, if he goes to Real Madrid, he's probably going to be there for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. So, you can afford to miss out on a year of him and save that 160 million or whatever. But, you know, that's... Uh, it, considering you know that you have the player, he's going to come to you either, either way. I, I just think they want to make sure nobody like Bayern makes an offer. And, like, you could still lose him. Like, football, nothing is set yeah. in stone. And people's uh, uh, trades or transfers get hijacked all the time. And I think if... They just want to make sure. And if they get him, mm-hmm. then they, for sure, 100%, then they're like, we can get Pogba, we can get Camavinga, or whoever else yeah. is, is going to be out of contract next year. Like, he, he might be the piece to let you get the other pieces. You could take the chance of be like, all right, we'll just get him for free. But just to make you look foolish if you don't, everybody will say, why didn't they make an offer? You know, if but somebody is- makes an offer and he goes to them before he gets to Madrid. Yeah, but this is a club and a president that's been crying over the entire summer about how difficult it is for the La Liga teams to financially be in the right. Oh, uh, but they uh, they have money now. The fact that no, but the fact that the Super League didn't go through, right? Right. Um, Florentino Perez has been on record saying that this is really tough. Like, and the, the English teams are forging ahead, and they're being left behind, and that's why they had to do the Super League, and that's why they're not you know, giving up on the same league. It seems like they found 160 million. I'm, just I'm lying let, there. No, well, well, they, they didn't. They, 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 Hakimi yeah. is gone, right? So Hakimi's gone. They sold old Odengar. No, Hakimi was not uh, Real Madrid. Well, somebody was. There's somebody. Are you sure? No, Hakimi, Hakimi was, was on, Inter Milan. He was on loan to Dortmund from Real Madrid yeah, two seasons back. ago. They yeah. inter, inter purchased him. From Real Madrid? Yeah, and then PSG have purchased him from Inter. Oh, okay. But but I was just saying that they sold him like last season. Yeah. Like they, they started clearing off their wage bill since last season. They're not as mm-hmm. much as in trouble. So, so, so Hakimi's gone. They sold Odengard. And I think they sold somebody else, right? Then 
Bale Ramos is off the wage bill. Ramos is off the wage bill, and so is Varane. And then Varane. they're gonna, and then uh, Bale's six hundred thousand, whatever dollars, pounds, or euros <laughs> a year, um, a, a week is gonna be off. This is the last year of his contract, right? Mm. So that's gonna be off their wage bill. They can literally afford to get Mbappe. Now. But they but but they gave they gave David Alaba even though it was a free transfer they gave him an insane contract I think it's like three seventy thousand a week or something like that like it was a crazy contract for somebody uh, <laughs> of that profile like a defender yeah but they need they 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 need defenders they they, they you, sometimes a good defender is as good as a an Mbappe you know what yeah, I mean? he still drew three three with Levante at the weekend you're right right yeah. Yes, I mean, they, how, they clearly do they have the money. Them. I mean, they clearly do have the money. I just don't understand, like how you know they they keep they keep lamenting the fact that they are in financial debt because they are. So yeah, yeah. it just it doesn't it doesn't match up. But, but like you said, those businesses are badly running. They're, they're just going to keep doing yeah. what they do until it's impossible. Lee, what do you think? I'm surprised that he wants to leave right now. Um, okay. Because if I was him, I mean, obviously I don't know everything that goes on behind the scenes, but like the club has just signed like Messi amongst other people. Yeah. Um, they've probably got the strongest squad they've ever had in their history right now. Mm. They've still never won a Champions League. Like this could be the year that they do that. Why not stay and be part of that? Like surely like, if you're an attacking, or if you're any footballer, like it should be a dream to play with Messi. But here's the thing. He's not trying to leave right now. Madrid just offered that. Yeah. yeah. He never said anything. He's, he's just like, I'm not signing a new contract. Mm. So he's down to like yeah. stay and play. He's played, I think, in the games that they had so far. Yeah. So, yeah. It, it, you know, this is still a thing where I can win the trophy this year and then leave, mm. you know, and then. And yeah, if I was him, I, w- I would not go right now. I would, I would wait. What, yeah. what, what, so what combination? This is the question I want to ask you. So. So there's a threat that he might leave, though. That still exists, you know? Mm. So would you rather see Neymar, Messi, and Mbappe? And then we was talking about earlier before the podcast came on air about uh, you can buy out Ronaldo's contract, his one-year contract at Inter, at Juventus, my bad, for 25 mil. Would you rather see uh, Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar? Like, those... Because... If Mbappe leaves, they might just go for, yeah, for Ronaldo. So, so which combination of which which three would you rather? I'd, I'd, I'd rather see Ronaldo there just for the yeah the spectacle of Messi yeah. and Ronaldo in the same team. Like mm-hmm. you know, it's it would be something for the ages. Like mm-hmm. the two best players. It's a shame it didn't happen five years ago. Right. Um, but it would still be crazy just to see them balling out on the same team. They're both still at a crazy high level. Yeah. Um, so I think just yeah I mean I'm not sure whether it would work well whether it'd be too many egos mm. whether it'd be a real mess but I still want to see it <laughs> yeah. yeah and then and then like they're playing on neutral French ground like France <laughs> seems to be the Switzerland of football <laughs> because <laughs> Mess, Messi and, and Ramos are on the same team in peace now after being enemies for so long and then if Ronaldo joins them it's, it's France PSG is definitely Switzerland and you could go there and then to see, they both want to win another Champions League. That's why Ronaldo went to Juventus, and that's why Messi went to PSG. But then it's like, while you're working together as a team to win the to win the the, the Champions League, you're like, I don't want that motherfucker to get a ball on door over me. Mm. And so then there's going to be that thing, and then Neymar is like. I'm not the leader anymore. <laughs> well, well, I'm not even the second leader anymore. <laughs> the second leader anymore. And then Pochettino's like, I'm not even... I'm just... I'm just Pochettino is like, finally I might win anything, but then everybody's going to say it is not because of me. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> people still say that about Pep, that he's not won the Champions League without Messi. Yeah, but... So. Yeah, but... I, I, yeah, I don't, that doesn't count to me. Like you're, you're obviously nah, I'm immediately cancelling the Champions League if 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 Poch wins it with these guys. If you said like say that again. I'm immediately cancelling the Champions League if Poch wins it with these guys. What do you mean cancelling it? <laughs> I'm I'm cancelling it. Like for me, that entry does not exist. 
What? Like, like if, if it's Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar? Maybe with Mbappe, I'll give it to him. It has, no, it has to be done. <laughs> I, like, I, I got to give them credit to do it. Number one, wow. you have to give them the handicap for their age. They're in their mid-30s. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not getting 29-year-old Ronaldo, 26-year-old Messi. There is a certain handicap. Like, like 20-year-old Messi would run back and defend. Mm. You just, this, this Messi can't so much. And Ronaldo, you definitely ain't. So, you, you, like, there's going to be a team that has discrepancies in their defensive midfield is even going to have more. So, if they win... It's that because that's the problem, right? Like the, like the strength of like their defense and the. the well, the, but they the they also spent a lot in def- for defenders. Like they got Hakimi, they got Ramos, they mm-hmm. got Donnarumma. Like I mean, they've pretty pretty much got like a almost a world class or near world class player in every yeah, position. And, and, they, and they have a homeboy from Liverpool, the Dutch guy. Uh, the one uh, yeah. Yeah, one out of them. They got Ramos, so yeah, but. You know, they've, they've addressed their problem. They, they still have to win it. It'll, it'll be like it, it, like a bunch of dudes that's won the Champions League before that got together to win the Champions League one last time. I, I'll be very surprised if Ronaldo, like if maybe Ronaldo would be okay. Actually, it would be perfect for Ronaldo to get to Messi, uh, to get to PSG. Because that would mean no matter what uh, Messi does, he will not be able to match Ronaldo's tallies of Champions Leagues. Because right. they'll both be winning. If they win, they win together. Right. But that'll but, be great. But but Messi, mm-hmm. I think moving to PSG would be perfect because he can finally catch up to Ronaldo. But that won't happen if Ronaldo is also there. So Ronaldo should be trying to go to PSG. And Messi it's, should be, it's only Messi way should to be stop outside Messi from getting ahead of him. And Messi should be outside the Sheikh's office every day of the week <laughs> and just like, you know, like, like the block this. Like, do not let this happen. I'm out of the door. <laughs> And the shake is like, I'm the shake. He's coming. <laughs> yeah. She's I, like, I, this is FIFA. You guys think you have a chance? Like, this is FIFA for me. Yeah. I'm about to lose my job. This dude is coming. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, I definitely, I might have to get B in TV to watch the yeah. French League. Yeah. And I, I, just, I, saw- I just got the, I just realized CBS is now uh, doing Serie A. Yeah, I just re- I just realized that yeah. that means I wasted last season of not watching it. They just got it or they've been had it. I think they just got it because I don't remember seeing it last season. Right. If you watch um if you watch the French league right now, it also doubles up as UFC as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so true. Explain that that Marseille Nice. Yeah, yeah. Nice Nice were at home to Marseille and Whenever Payet was taking corners, loads of the Nice fans were throwing shit at him. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the sort of referee was coming over and some stewards were coming over. But then all of a sudden, Payet decides to pick like bottles up and throw them back at the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, I can understand the frustration when the crowd are throwing all sorts of stuff at you to want to throw it back. But it's never going to solve the situation. <laughs> it's always going to make things worse. But all the Nice fans started running onto the pitch and it just sparked a massive brawl. Players were getting strangled. All sorts of crazy things were happening and then Marseille just refused to play um, after that. So, yeah, there's some some stuff's going to go down. And, and this was at Marseille? At Nice. This is at Nice. And and Payet plays for Marseille. Nice. Yes. Yeah. He plays for Marseille. He plays Marseille, yeah. So he threw the bottle back at his own fans? No, at the Nice fans. So the Nice fans were in the Marseille, in their... In the, the, in the so this is the confusing thing. So they were playing at Marseille. No, no Nice. They was playing at Nice, and then Payet plays for Marseille. Yeah, yeah. So he's the away player throwing stuff back at the home fans. Right. Um, and then they just so, invaded the pitch. So why did the Marseille players refuse to play? Because <laughs> they thought they were not in a safe environment anymore. Because even the Nice stewards were like throwing punches and things. Oh, um, yeah. It was all quite crazy. Like, um, like it's quite a big rivalry that one because they're they're both mm-hmm. on the south coast. Right. Um, there's sort of a few clubs down there that don't like each other, like Monaco, Marseille, Nice as well. They're all in the same region. Well, well, my take on this is, hey man, and, and there's a lot of irony in this moment. Irony in this moment because uh, somebody hit me up the other day 
and there's this documentary that just got released i think on netflix called malice in the palace oh yeah i was a big basketball <laughs> oh yeah fan at the time and uh it was a and the malice in the palace is about i think ron artest and a mm -hmm. few detroit pistons i think yeah when a fan threw a drink cup at one of them and he ran into the stands or one of them ran into the stands mm. and, and punched the fan, he thought through it and then a brawl ensued. And my thing was they, they maligned those players and called yeah. them thugs and everything afterwards. And it's mm. like, hey man, you are not as a fan supposed to hit a player. And I feel yeah. like if you do, then they can punch you. Yeah. And then they can throw stuff back. I don't think this is a, a bad on Payette. He didn't, He's playing his yeah. game. He should feel safe. And then if the 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 they're not protecting him, like even though he's throwing it back, it might hit the wrong person. Like if I feel like if something like this doesn't happen, then because I was watching a British game this week, a Premier League game, and somebody was about to take a corner and a bottle landed next to them and they ignored it. Mm. But this that was is Rich been, James, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this has been happening. So it's like mm -hmm. something like this needs to happen to let fans know you can't do that shit. Oh, and and then if something like that, like that bottle that went near Reese James, like I want to see the security grab that guy and yank him out, and they, they have to show that, not, mm -hmm. not the per so that other fans don't feel like you can just do this. Like mm -hmm. fans are tripping, man. Like they did a great job to stop the Super League, but I think mm -hmm. like some of the empowerment that they got from that, and the racism that players and abuse players have to go through you, and they're, they're like well you get paid a lot no i'm a human being don't yeah don't, don't do, that. do you think after Pyatt decided to fight back against the fans that he's now going to change his name to world peace or something yeah but yeah you can't just be like hitting people and expect them not to hit back I don't think that this is possible in football, though. Like, um, I remember when the when the when the Pacers that brawl happened, it was like, oh, this is this is great. Like, we've seen a nice hockey, mm -hmm. but I it never actually can happen in in football. I think the closest came to was Cantona, went into the stands, and oh, he kicked the guy, and kick yeah, scissor kicked the guy and. Uh, but it's like it's it's because you know you know the fans players have got so much of especially these days they're trained to like not flinch at all no matter what happens. So, um, but yeah, I'm I'm completely uh, with the fact that Bayer did the right thing and even the rule that I don't know what's happened like did is Marseille because they refused to come out so they not they lost the game right by the rules yeah. So I hope that gets reviewed because that's so stupid. Yeah, they forfeit the game by not coming back. Yeah, why yeah, would I mean, they come out? And it's, so so it was the Nice fans that threw the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So why would the Marseille players come back out after being beat up by Nice fans to yeah. play a game where they could get beat up again in an unsecure field? Like, you stop the game for a thunderstorm. These are human goddamn lightning bolts. And... and, and and the officials are so, you know, they're so rigid. Like, they just look at the book, and the book says if the team doesn't come out, they're four feet. So, um, that's, that's, that's not right, because there's times when fans act up and they ban the fans from games. They don't ban the team. Or, like, you have to play behind closed doors. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just reading now. It says apparently that Nice could have part of their stadium closed or completely closed, um, and they're potentially going to lose points as well. Mm. Um, and potentially there's going to be like a criminal investigation into certain people too. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, some like Gunduski and this other player, like they got, they, they had like scratches all and like, you know, marks all over their necks. Yeah, they're, 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 they look like, you know, when a woman goes to the police and takes photos after oh, her yeah. husband or boyfriend beat her, they're yeah, like, they're yeah, those type of bruises. I was like, and that's yeah. that, that's from fans. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so let's go. So the big game of the weekend, Chelsea versus Arsenal. How are you feeling about Chelsea's 2-0 drubbing of Arsenal 
Neil. Yeah, I mean, you put it rightly. It was still just two nil, but it was also a drubbings because it just seemed such a dominant, comfortable game. I think second half we kind of coasted along. I don't think we ever really got out of third gear except for like certain patches of the game. Um, but yeah, I mean, the big the big thing was you know how is Lukaku going to perform? He's had like I think two training sessions before the game, so. How is he going to play? Because this team under Tuchel has not played with a centre forward like that, like a, a tall centre forward, like even Tammy, even though he's not the same physical profile mm-hmm. um, of Lukaku, but at least he's like you know he's got the height, and uh, Tammy's like not played at all under Tuchel, so it was a it was a big mystery to see like how Lukaku is going to play, and it just came as advertised, like. Romelu Lukaku did everything that you would expect him to do on the uh, uh, for a team. You know, he was holding up the ball, he was laying laying it off, making those runs, um, both runs with the ball behind you and the ball in front of you, and you you put the cross in, he's there. Mm-hmm. He was there like three times. One he, he got the goal, one was a great save, and one he missed the target. So, um, uh, you, you know, I mean, this is. This, this is really what uh, I think every Chelsea fan has been looking forward to uh, because this was our biggest hole. Like we couldn't, we would get into these games, create a lot of, I think we had an XG of 3.5 uh, in the game, which is, which is pretty uh, uh, extraordinary. And, but we've had such games before too. What is XG again? You said XG. XG is expected goals. Oh. Um you know, like depending on the chances that were created and the positions they were created in, the positions the shots were taking in, typically how much does um, you only had 22 score? shots? <laughs> yeah, so uh, but like what I'm saying is we've had games with really high XGs in the last year, year and a half, but we just come out feeling so flat, like the scoreline just doesn't reflect what we've been doing in these games, so you only had 65% possession of the ball. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, I think that was the biggest change. Like, we, we could see that, you know, the, the shots mean something and uh, they were getting con- converted. And, um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's not a big uh, indicator because we're really playing a very poor Arsenal team like that. <laughs> yeah, you could, you could literally pick any team from the bottom, bottom of the bottom half and... You know, if, if they didn't tell you it was Arsenal, you wouldn't know. Yeah. Lee, let me ask you a question. What performance of Arsenal do you think was better? The one last week when they lost 2 nothing to Brentford or the one this week when they lost 2 nothing to Chelsea? I guess I mean, it's, it's pretty the bad. Two, it's the 2 nothing <laughs> loss to Chelsea an improvement over the 2 nothing loss to Brentford. I think it's more respectable as an overall okay. score. But, I mean, in the first half, Chelsea just bossed them. Yeah. I think but then Arsenal, 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 Arsenal have a little bit of credit from the second half, but yeah. they still weren't great. But it, I thought, like, in the, in the, the beginning of both halves, Arsenal got on the front foot at least in the first half of, the, of the, this game and the first half and the, set, the first part of the second half of this game, which none of that existed versus Brentford. Yeah, they had, they had some chances against Brentford, but I mean, in both games, they just looked, you can just see the lack of character and the lack of quality that they've got, which is a bit of a worry, um, given that they've spent quite a bit of worth. I think they, they're the highest spending club. Um, this season, yeah, for sure. This season. Um, I mean, admittedly, they need to do that, but I mean... I don't know, it just looks so like, especially going forward, they need to sort out where the situation is going on with Aubameyang and Lacazette to get them back starting. Because that starting team where it's like Martinelli up front, it's like, mm, I don't see you scoring today. <laughs> um, I like him, I rate him, but he's more of a winger or a second striker. Like You can't put the burden mm-hmm. on that guy. Um, not to be at the level they need him to be right now. They, Yeah, I mean, I would be worried if I was an Arsenal fan. It's not... It's not looking good. I mean, it's only two games. They could turn it around. And I like Arteta, but something's not working. Something's not working. Do you think Housen Hulu could do a better job than, than uh, 
Oh, nah, he's story. terrible. Everyone, every, nobody, <laughs> nobody else should look at him. He's terrible. Uh, <laughs> they should just leave him where he is. <laughs> right. I thought you wasn't feeling him last week. Now you're now you're trying to protect him. Uh, I, I felt like it, it, it's they don't have any leaders. They're, when your only mm-hmm. leader is Xhaka, and I know Arteta was making an excuse afterwards that nine uh, starting players were missing, but I'm like, he's making excuses and trying to protect himself and keep this job that is like slipping through his hands. And there's nothing he can do with it to save that job unless he gets the results. And it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to care who's missing. They're just going to look at like how many losses and how many wins you don't have. And, uh, and when a coach makes excuses, that's never a good sign because like real, the most successful coaches says it doesn't matter who's not there. It's who's there. So it's, it's pretty telling. And it's just like, uh, they, they just, you can't let the ball get to Lukaku. And it was just too easy for, like, there was one where Rudiger, who made a, a through pass yeah. on the floor, straight from defense to Lukaku, to Lukaku. the person yeah. you're supposed to not let that happen to from the least likely person. And it's like, you got to seal those channels shut. You got to, like, figure out a way to flood the midfield and, and stop that from happening. That's just some basic shit. And then they let Lukaku like suck their players into the middle mm. to unsuccessfully block the passes to him, to leave Reese James open on the outside for him to create havoc too. And it's just like, I, I just think they didn't have their heads about them. And uh, I, I just think Arteta is in real trouble. And, and uh, the only fun thing, not the only fun thing, the, well, the only fun thing about like Man U not winning this weekend is just checking out Arsenal TV <laughs> and how the fans react. I, I got to be honest, a lot of the fans were like very, they weren't like, let's fire him. There was one like, let's fire him from the clips that I saw. But most of them were like, it's only two games, which was impressively level-headed talking from Arsenal fans. But but they also know the team is weak. Yeah. It's, I it's, think, go ahead. I, I think it's, it's also about, you know, fine, they didn't have a couple of these players, but when you know you have those uh, deficiencies going into a game and you're playing a team like Chelsea, which is going to play on the front foot, you try and be a little more compact. Like, the amount of space Reese James had on the right-hand side was... I've never seen something like this. A plane uh, could take off on that side of the field. Yeah, exactly. Like every time, like, and it kept happening. Mm-hmm. So uh, you could launch SpaceX and then the fire from the rocket taking off wouldn't touch any of the players. That's how much space was over there. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, you know, the, there were a lot of good signs in this game, but I don't know how much to, because this was really a team that both in terms of personnel and tactically was not of the typical standard that you'd face in the Premier League. Um, I mean, there were some signs that were, you know, with the whole Lukaku thing, the fact, the way Lukaku was combining with, uh, you know, all the other attacking players, Havertz, Mount, Alonso, and Reese James, Mm -hmm. that was really uh, positive. But, um, uh, you know, as you're saying, like, there was a period where, especially in the beginning of the second half, Arsenal was having a lot of, giving us some trouble. And um, it, it kind of calmed down once Kante got, uh, got subbed in. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe that is something, uh, you know, we need to look at because every time we don't play Kante, we, uh, we kind of, I mean, we, again. But you Georgie, were winning the game without Kante. Yeah, I know. But like that. And can we, and can we give really, Kovacic some credit yeah. too for like. No, we can. And, um, and Kovacic, he made that pass to Reese James, who, you know, eventually got the assist for Lukaku's goal. And they're good, but like sometimes when a team really presses you, which Arsenal was doing in the beginning of the second half, they it's not their fault. They're just not built for that kind of a game. Like they're not physically built, uh, both Jorginho and Kovacic, for that kind of uh, uh, a game. Uh, Tuchel actually in the lead up to the game uh, was asked about Jorginho 
in a press conference and he gave one of the most fascinating in the in the sense that how detailed it was what about was he what was he asked and what did he he was i i don't know what is the exact wording of the question but it was essentially asking about uh uh you know whether tuchel ever tried to get jorginho when he was at psg and uh, second was you know just to ask what kind of qualities jorginho adds to a team you know why do coaches like him so much and he gave a very detailed answer and that pretty much like you know i've if i had to articulate i i don't think i could have articulated it better than what he said so you know 80 90% positive about jorginho the, the things things he brings you know what he does with the ball um so i'm just i just pulled it up here i don't want to miss quote and he says i think georgi is a very strategic player he can play in advance knows what to do in ball position can imagine what is going to happen in one or two passes ahead he knows where to help out in short distances long distances when to switch play when not to switch play he has a good sense of rhythm so he goes on he says a lot of these things i don't want to like drag it on but you know this one thing that he says and that's where is the you know kind of a problem with jay he says he lacks if you isolate him or watch him separately the pure physical ability that makes him the number one candidate to be a uh, to be a number 6 in the premier league and um, but once you have him in a structure he's very well organized in his game he organizes all the environment around him so you know that's what happens like in games where everything is in control and in phases where everything is controlled um jorginho looks like one of the best players in uh, uh best midfielders in the league but if you get at him you can actually get at him which is not the problem with some of the you know if you're like a physically uh, uh like a physical uh, defender uh defensive midfielder how many how many players i, I just think you guys are looking for perfection and there's no perfect player it's very few perfect players and I, I, yeah but you know most teams with a jorginho would win and yeah they're going to have their bad days or the days when somebody figures out a strategy for them but uh, I, i think this picking at jorginho thing is like kind of overboard especially if they're considering him for balon d'or you know yeah i th- i think i think that's what i'm saying like uh, it, the the point about picking on him is just to point out that that like we need another option you're not saying that jorginho should you know you should ship him out or anything he's still going to be a very valuable team to a uh, member of a team that's looking to challenge for major trophies but i think a slightly different profile in the squad would also help for certain moments man you guys are <laughs> chelsea chelsea's the only team that picks on its best players you know what i mean you, no like the, i the think players that have no. won that stuff like there's this like You never you can't compare him. Jorginho to William. I have not but, given But I, I am not though. Given I am though. Like William like Peter. Hazard was flawless for you guys. Like nobody ever complained about Hazard, but yeah. like I would, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like like even when William won the player of the year for Chelsea, you you would list a bound of issues for him. Same thing with That was a year when we finished 10th. That's actually an indictment of the no, fact but, that this guy but that that it wasn't his fault you the rest of the team needed to step their game up to his level oh as it was on he got team. a few free kicks in that's how you got play of the year nah, and then yes. when he scores penalties they're dismissed and then who else who else do you all dismiss over there like that we have these constant discussions about no but i'm saying like you know somebody like rudiger who i was picking on um but ever since he moved to a back three he looks like one He's of the improved. best defenders in the league so you know Fred would be similar to Marcus Alonso like he's keeping Ben Chilwell out of the team you, which you, I'm very critical of Marcus Alonso but now yeah, but not. again we moved to a back three he is playing like the Marcus Alonso we saw under Anthony he's a wing Pante. back now yeah he's yeah. He's, he's Moses yeah and yeah. he doesn't even like being a wing back like he likes being a winger <laughs> like an inside forward but you know he's he's really having a blind start to the season i didn't think it would be possible for alonso to keep chilwell out of the team with the way chilwell finished the season in the champions league but he's doing that chilwell chilwell is kind of bland and i think overrated you know i don't i just like when you guys wanted to buy him i was like all right i think a lot of chelsea fans thought the same but he's changed the opinion of many a chelsea fan with the way he's performed like even def- both defensively and well, offensively well, listen marcus alonso looks good 
and you guys didn't want him in a wing back position. Chilwell exactly is going to look good too. It, it might not be Chilwell, and it might no, but Chilwell looked Alonso. good. No, but Chilwell looked good both under Lampard's back four and um, uh, uh, Tuchel's uh, back three. Like, I didn't see anything special when he was with Lampard. Um, no, he was he he actually. Um, you remember how we did all these signings? Mm-hmm. He was the guy along with Mendy who had an immediate impact. Uh, there were very few, like you know, Thiago Silva was like getting injured, and you know, we, we all know Ziyech Werner Havertz didn't set the world alight immediately. But Mendy and Chilwell were the guys at the, in those moments who were uh, who were actually doing what we paid them to do. I don't know. I, I just didn't say anything great. What do you think, Lee? I like Chilwell, and I think, yeah, he, he was getting some, like, popping up with some goals and assists when he first joined. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he had a little sort of quiet spell, maybe middle of the season, but then finished real strong as well. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I rate him, but, I mean, it's only fair that Alonso keeps his place for the way he's playing yeah. at the moment. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as good as Chilwell is, he's, he's no Luke Shaw, so. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Southgate thought as well. Yeah, he's 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 one of our own. <laughs> Stop, Luke Shaw is one of our own, right? <laughs> he's probably got one of these back home. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. So let's get to a, a Lee's probably favorite topic of mm. the, the weekend: Southampton's victory over United. And I know it was a tie, but we dropped points, so that's a win for Southampton for us. How did you all pull this off? after losing to Everton, who tied with Leeds, who we were able to beat Leeds, but we weren't able to beat the team that Everton beat, that, and Everton couldn't beat Leeds. So how did you guys... That's the beauty of football. Like, yeah, it doesn't no. follow, it doesn't follow logic, uh, no logic a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean... Like my hope, I think I said on last week's podcast that I thought you would probably beat us, but I just hope we made it hard for you. Oh, you made it hard. Um, yeah, we, we, we definitely did make it hard. I mean, I still think you dominated most of the game. We, I think you dominated possession as well. I think you had like 60 something percent possession. Percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but against the big teams, we work better without possession because we want to press. We want you to have the ball so that we can press, force some mistakes and then create chances, which is what we did. Um, I mean, the goal came from a pressing tackle, um, no, which was it, not a foul. It, it was a judo <laughs> tackle. I took a judo class once, and that was <laughs> that move that Armstrong did was the move that they taught me in that one free class. <laughs> but no, he, he got the ball first, man. There's just needs to. Nah, uh, to he, the he, soft. He, he got the man. You put your foot across someone. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy over it. You know, like you have to play the whistle. Yeah. And Bruno complains a lot, you know, and he buys fouls and it, you have to adjust to this new league, which is one of the things I wanted to talk about even last week was like how the referee and has changed and how they're letting people play. And mm-hmm. Bruno has to know, and the rest of the team has to know, they're letting people play. And, you know, that, yeah, it was a foul last year, but... Mm-hmm. They didn't call it because it's not a foul yeah. this year. But yeah, and I mean, the finish was a little bit fortunate because that was a massive very, deflection very off a thread. But I mean, when we won the ball, the interplay around the area was quite nice, the way we yeah. moved it and the little layoff from uh, um, yeah. Armstrong to Adams was okay. quite nice. Those two look like a good partnership already, potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, they assisted each other last week against Everton. So, um, And then, yeah, I mean, Armstrong's chance late on came from a press as well. Yeah. where we won the ball and he could have finished. Um, I think it would have been unfair on United if we had scored two. Mm. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I'll take That's the draw. I mean, it's, it's, a shame we, it's a shame we let the lead slip, but I think it was coming. You could yeah. see it coming. Um, you know, United were knocking on the door. We changed to a back five as well, or like a back three with wing backs. Because um, Hassan Hull, I think he'd learned the lesson from Everton. He needed to change something mm-hmm. um, and maybe play a bit more defensive once we had that lead. And yeah, um, it is what it is. I mean, Pogba was great on the goal. Right. Um, still carrying that form on from, from last time. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think a draw overall was probably fair. I think United were the better team on the day just, but our tactics 
worked. We knew we were going to be, you know, on the back foot for large spells of the game, but with the pressing yeah. tactics. But and, you, yeah, you weren't though, you know? I mean, on the back foot in terms of not having the ball, um, you know, we played high up the pitch, which um, definitely yeah, helped on the chances we got. Um, but yeah, it was, I think it was a fun, fun game to watch for me anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it felt like a loss. And, uh, but it was good to see certain things. It was good to see Greenwood play good. It was good to see Pogba play good. So people can't like blame him for the loss afterwards. <laughs> so it was just like, good to see that. It, it, and, and then it, it, it's, it's not what happened on the field. It's like, what's, you know, like Manu needs to give us information. Like, why isn't Varane starting? Tell us why, instead of just have him on the bench and let us not hear anything. Like, I'm assuming from seeing Sancho play that there's a speed acclimation you got to get used to and a physicality acclimation that you're going to get used to in the Premier League. And he's not up to that yet. He played like 30 minutes. But at the same time, like, I didn't know Sancho was that small. Like, I watch Borussia Dortmund games all the time and Haaland is a giant. And it's like, how much bigger are the players in the Premier League that I was like, He's shorter than short hair. You ever seen short hair play? Yeah. Like, I, like, he had the buzz. Like, who is that kid out there in the in the third kit? Like, so I get. I guess we got to get him used to playing. But and Ali has to like take some chances. You maybe saw him with the fro uh, in in the Bundesliga. Right, but he still has like the box cut. He just looks yeah. small. He's like super small. So it might be a strength thing that he might have to like lift some weights and you know try to pull off some of those tricks that he's used to pulling off. But uh, yeah, and he didn't do much when he got on. I I I don't have a problem with Ali putting in a uh, putting in Lingard because Lingard scored a lot for Westbrook for. West Ham and we needed to try to get a goal mm -hmm. so I don't have a problem with that even though some people will say well you, we dropped our most attacking player Pogba back you know but uh but it's makes sense to have somebody who's been scoring prolifically for another team in the same league like go forward and see if he could do anything but Lingard didn't get into any situations it's like twice when I said pass the ball faster and it'll shift their defense around and then you'll be able to get what you want to do and he didn't he waited till he had to make back passes so I was like, ah. and then people are shitting on Fred. And, uh, but I, I saw Fred specifically save a goal in the first half when uh, I forgot what player it was from Southampton was down on the left and took a shot and Fred just stood right in front of it and blocked it. They're blaming him for not fully committing to blocking the, the Shea goal, but I don't blame him for that. That's just football. Uh, I, I guess we do need a central, a CDM, like just... Like we had a lot of quality on the field. And when we lose or draw, our fans go overboard. And they then mm. review the game right after the game <laughs> and, and think that they're speaking logically. Yeah, that's the worst time to and, and it's, a game. And it's, it's the worst time. <laughs> it's like, because they said Juan Bissaka had a bad game, but Juan Bissaka, no goals came in from Juan Bissaka's <laughs> side. You know, so how does he have a bad game? Yeah. Uh, and the uh, thing is, we, we make it difficult when big teams come to play us we, we're not a team especially at home you, and usually against the big teams we're not a team where you know unless you're Leicester and you come to us we don't roll over um, right. so <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Man United fans are just very disrespectful to other teams unless it, it's just like like when I see like the pre-match thing the day before on United TV it's Southampton I mean they, you know they you know they, they might do something, but we're supposed to beat them easily. They don't know the names of the players on the team. And, and they, they just like, it's just really some self-centered fandom. Yeah. I think last week raised the expectations even more as well. Yeah, it did. It did. Because you guys you lost. Can't, you can't, you're not going to do that every week to everyone in the Premier League. It's just not possible. Yeah. It's not possible. And we're expecting, we have Sancho, we're thinking like we like to forget a lot of things conveniently out of excitement that the speed of our league is, is, is also 
a more physical league than Bundesliga, and these players have to get up to the speed of the league. And we want them to just be in the starting lineup and starting and just doing it right away. Even though there is some confusion because there are some players from other leagues that just came in from other teams and they started right away. So it's like there is there is a communication thing where we need to be told why so that we know why. So that the, the, the fans are less frustrated. Now, I got a few questions, Lee. Like, what the fuck is a livramento? And where the <laughs> fuck? I, like, I, I heard where he came from, but I want you to explain. And Sa- Saliso, pretty good. And I also, back to the Arsenal game, there was, I want to give a special shout out to, uh, to this player I never heard of before. And, uh, is it the Belgian centre midfielder? Yeah, Le Conga. Le Conga. Le, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's He's like it's, it's such a shame that Lukanga, Smith Rowe, and Saka are on a team without experienced players and yeah. theory. Like they, they are the leaders of a team and they're fucking kids. They and it's like your leader is Xhaka. I don't want to shit on Xhaka, <laughs> but you know, he's just we know there's something missing there from making him a great player, and he's not he's inconsistent. And then, like, they're playing on a team, and behind them is Holding and pa- Pablo Mari. It, it's just, yeah. and Martelletti's in front of you, and in front of him is Lukaku bearing down on you. So it's just like, Arsenal has a lot of good youth. But you guys, your transfer market was good, apparently, better than. People in the yeah, league. I mean, um, we're not done yet. We're being linked with two players more. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Livermento has been amazing since he came in. Like Neil was pretty bummed about losing. Um, so he's ex Chelsea. Yeah, he's he was. He was talking about. He was Chelsea's academy player of the year last season. Yeah, just oh, last, sure. last season, yeah. Um, and, and 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 you sold him to Southampton. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, there's um, a buyback Buy clause. clause. Yeah. That's a pretty high amount, I think, because we only bought him for five million. Yeah. Uh, so it wouldn't surprise me that yeah, there's there's something in there to get him back. But I mean, yeah. last season I would say Carl Walker Peters was probably one of our best performers alongside Ings and Ward Prowse. Um, mm-hmm. And he can't get in the team right now. <laughs> yeah, that eighteen-year-old um, sat him down. Yeah. He he not Which only is... sat Fred down, he sat his teammate down. <laughs> yeah. On the bench. Um, which is, yeah, crazy. I mean, you can see there's still some elements of his game where he needs to be a little bit more intelligent, maybe, but he's exciting. Mm. He's so exciting for, for a guy that age um, to be that good already and to be able to just come and comfortably play in the Premier League at first team level already um, is crazy. I mean, I don't know what Chelsea are doing. Whoever's coaching all their right backs. <laughs> um, I mean, Rhys James, Harry Glamty, um, yeah. and now Lee Romento as well. Like, yeah, some coach there is doing a good job with young right backs. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. But, uh, they're all ex. They're all ex forwards. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but um, actually, uh, some like both Livermento and James have played at right centre back a lot because we play even at Academy level. We play three at the back. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. Right wing back for us as well. In when we switch yeah. to the back five. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um. But um, Salisu is an interesting one because he joined at the start of last season mm-hmm. and, and he didn't play for the first few months because he was getting up to speed and the sort of stuff you're talking about with Varane and stuff. But he didn't mm-hmm. play for the first half of the season. Then he came in after Christmas and sort of played a handful of games. He would even cover at left back because he's left footed when Bertrand was injured. Mm-hmm. Um, he covered at left back, but you could see he was still settling in. But he looks a lot better. I mean, he he had a couple of mistakes against Everton in the first game, so I'm pleased that he looked better this week um, because not. he's going to he's going to play a whole lot more this season than he did last season. Right. Um, but we're we're signing a Brazilian defender from Torino called Lianco. Mm. Um, apparently, the deal is almost done. He's had a medical and stuff, so that'll be the direct replacement for Vestergaard. Mm. Um, we still got Ben Breck to come back as well after his Euros. Um, he was on the bench. Um, so, yeah, I think we got, we're got starting to get good cover in the team. We're being linked with um, one of the Longstaff brothers from Newcastle as well. Right, right. Because we need we need some centre midfield cover. I think it's Sean Longstaff, not Matty Longstaff. Um, but apparently Which one's older, Sean or Matty? 
I can't remember. I just know they're brothers and they're both they both play the same position as well and they're both decent. Right. So yeah. Um yeah, he's worth ten he's apparently available for ten million, which is pretty cheap for a Premier League player. Mm. Um but we need right. cover there because we have Romeo Wall Prowse and Diallo. There's only three players you kind of need four centre mids really. Um mm. so yeah, if we get those players in, I think that makes us a lot stronger. But we need to start scoring more and conceding less. So we'll see what happens in the coming games. I mean, it's it's much more promising after last week, but it's still only two uh, games. All your, all, all your goals have come from pressing. Yeah. But you guys press really well. Yeah, I mean, Armstrong was a great buy for that because he's quite aggressive and mobile and Che Adams is as well. So I think those two as a pair will cause defenders real problems with the way they... Uh, the way they go after the ball. I think Hassan, I heard Hassan Util mentioned something about the fact that Adams is already at the level where he doesn't, because the whole center point about your game is the pressing, right? So um, Adams apparently were, you know, got acclimatized to it right away. So he didn't really, really need a lot of lamp up time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're players that have done it, both their clubs they played at before. And I think, Pressing with two centre forwards causes so much problems for some it teams does. because yeah. so many teams are used to facing just one number nine. And if you've got defenders yeah. that are comfortable on the ball and a goalkeeper that's comfortable on the ball, it's quite easy to move one striker and then get mm. past them. Mm -hmm. um, you can play around them. But when it's two aggressive centre forwards, it's really hard. I mean, I went to watch um, the season where Leicester beat us 9-0. I went to watch the return game at Leicester. Mm -hmm. And we beat them. We got our revenge. But that day we had um, Danny Ings and Shane Long as a front two mm -hmm. pressing Soyuncu and Evans. And they couldn't handle it. Like they literally, every time they got the ball, they were panicking. And then we threw Shea Adams on as a sub for Long as well. And we were just taking the ball off them constantly. And we beat them that day with that. So, yeah, I think for two centre-backs, if you're both being pressed by two forwards, it's, it causes a problem. Speaking of Soyuncu, like, I'm going to talk about the West Ham versus yeah. Leicester game. And listen, if you thought that, who is the guy that got sent off for uh, Leicester? Ayosi Perez. If, Perez you thought, yeah. if you thought Ayosi Perez had a bad game by getting sent <laughs> off, like, like, Sionjo was like, I'll show you bad game. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you think, like, like, that guy, like, he got pressed, he made mistakes, he had an assist on... The, the goal that uh, Mikel Antoni had an assist on because he passed mm. the ball to Mikel Antoni. And, yeah. uh, and it's just like the miscontrol. And then, it, then, then the, the goal that Mikel Antonio scored, it was it, he had his back to Soyonchu, controlled it, turned on him in the middle of the field, shot, scored. He just got abused. Like only Pablo, <laughs> Pablo Mori and him might be like, you know, you have a. A, a group that gets together to talk about trauma that they've gone through, like a support group. A support group. They are, they're in the same support group right now. <laughs> after after Sunday, Jesus Christ! I love Antonio's celebration as well with the uh, the mm -hmm. cardboard Kyle. That was brilliant. Yeah, I love that interview. Like that guy. Yeah, that was an that was an entertaining interview. He's fucking funny. He's yeah. real. I like that dude. I, I, you know, it's just he's just like a fun guy, and just makes he just wins you over and makes you like him and makes you want to root for him. And he's yeah. just not, it's just he's just very natural, and it's just good for him to finally find a position after these years, and just the patience to be passed around from position to position, and just want to be a part of the team. And then now he's a number nine, and then ex explanation about getting the number nine and saying I wanted to get to keep the thirty. But then I was like, let me just com completely commit to this and, and then to score those goals and just to play the way he's been playing, man. God bless him, man. I, I, he's mm. impressive and a, he's a fun guy. It's fun to watch him play and it's fun to watch him get interviewed after he's played, mm. you know? And um, Ben Rama and Fornells are looking really good for West Ham as well. Mm -hmm. um, ben Rama sort of took a little while to acclimatise after coming up from Brentford last season he didn't really play as much especially when Lingard got there as well but right. I mean this season him and Fornals are both boring out as well for them yeah yeah man they looked uh, you know and they uh, they counter-attacked Leicester got their first goal then they got the 
the the man up, you know, advantage. And then they, you know, they they started doing their thing. And then they got the second goal. And then Lester came back. And then it was the Mikel Antonio show. You know? West Ham looks serious. I mean, they seem to just have carried over, carried on, you know, from where they left last season. Um, don't they? Do they have a depth problem? A depth problem? Or are they good? Potentially, yeah. Like Antonio is their only number nine. Yeah. All right, all right. So they are gonna, they are buying Kurzuma off of us. So, and that's is, is that is that is that gonna go through? Yeah, it looks like it's it's almost done. Thirty million. But Mikel is like in his thirties. He's definitely gonna get injured this season and go out be out for like a month or whatever. And you you're gonna need some goals. You know, so that's that's an issue. I know they want to get yeah. uh, Lingard back from us, but uh, yeah, they might make some. They might do some more business for the end of the window. Yeah, they were they were linked with Abraham for a little while, and yeah. also Ings as well. But obviously, both have moved now, so I don't know what options they have. I think I don't know if anything has changed in the last few days, but I think I was checking at the uh, during the, over the weekend. They are the only team to have not made a single transfer yet. Oh shit. So yeah, they could be you know they could be lining some stuff up like they are getting Kurzuma. That's that's almost that's already in the. And they're buying him from you guys. Yeah. How you feel about that? Yeah, I don't like it because I I mean even uh, I really like Zuma for you know what he brings as a. He pure, scores too. He scores. I think he's he's one of the. He's probably, I've, in my book, he's the best pure defender we have. I know a lot of other defenders in, in Chelsea who are really good on the ball too. So therefore, you know, that adds to their overall package. Zoom, that a little bit more old school. But I feel like, you know, when you have a spot, you sometimes need those kind of players too. It, you know, there are moments like games during the season where you really want somebody to go out there he's and he's a strongest you know, defender. But yeah, he's gonna say defender. I said who's I say he's a strongest defender. Who are you gonna you would need him to face Lukaku, but you have Lukaku. So you don't have <laughs> to worry about it. You don't have a Lukaku problem. And he's also he's so good aerially. Like he I think he and the only person who's better than him mm-hmm. aerially in the league is pre-injury Van Dyke. Like, you know, and, and assuming he would be the same even now, but uh um he so i think he adds a lot to the team even off the team off the pitch like he's such a I, I amazing think you guys might miss him like who who are yeah. your defenders now when you get rid of him well we are buying Jules Conde from Sevilla for 75 million so you tried the, to get Zuma to go there didn't you but he didn't want to join yeah, them. he didn't want to go to Sevilla so and he didn't want to even go to West Ham unless uh, until West Ham increased the pay package, I think that's what's happened over the last twenty-four hours. So, I, I think yeah. what a wash, Kunde. Well, like, what what do they think Kunde is gonna give you that Zuma isn't? Like, what? Is... Well, to be fair, Kunde is rated as one of the best up-and-coming centre backs in Europe. So, uh, like, I I'm not, I don't really like this, like, because I feel you're spending seventy-five million. For the position we already have, like if you look at the stats, it's already the, the best defense in Europe. So when you're paying, I mean, you're paying the kind of money uh, Liverpool paid for Van Dijk, uh, M- Manchester United paid for Harry Maguire, but these two players were coming into defenses that were that had problems, that were you know that were shipping a lot of goals, like. Kurne coming into like you you're spending that much money to the your class is already full. Like yeah. mm-hmm. even if he has a great career at Chelsea, this deal at this price does not make sense to me. Especially with Chalaba coming yeah. through as well. Yeah. So um, I think the idea is that Astlaketa is going to be moving on in the next couple of like he's almost 31, 32 now. Mm-hmm. So you're preparing to get. But my point is, if you're preparing for the future, when you're ready to pay 75 million, you'll get a good centre back every window like you don't need to um pull the pull the trigger right now so um he's a he's like from what i what i understand like you know from the games i've seen he is a good uh center back i think the only worry is that physically he's not the tallest he's he's not even six foot so yeah um 
uh, whether he can stand up to the physicality of the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, Cannavaro wasn't really that tall. A, we didn't really see Cannavaro in 2021 Premier League. But also, like, you can't just bring up the best that has ever been as your example for, you know. Right. Um, because then there's so many examples of tall people. Yeah. Being successful is way more. It's like there's, there's only one Muggsy Bogues. You can't just bring him up as an example for short basketball players. Like, yeah, short, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, he looks to be somebody that we've scouted for a while. So it, was, it isn't a rash panic uh, decision. So if the club is in favor, the scouting network is in favor, if the manager is on board, you know, I, I don't really see. Uh, it should not affect us. But still, the deal, it, it stinks. Like, as a deal, I don't like it. Yeah, I, I, I just don't think you're getting that much more yeah. enough to make that 75 yeah. Yeah. million, like, yeah. deal. And speaking of, like, I know we went back to Chelsea, but you guys mentioned Van Dyke. So next week is Van Dyke versus uh, Lukaku. Lukaku. And in England, there was supposed to be a heavyweight fight a few weeks ago between... Between what's the what's the what's the gypsy guy's name? Fury, Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury, Fury. and uh, what's the the, the other Anthony one? Joshua? Uh, yeah, and that fight got pushed. So now this is that fight. This is the <laughs> soccer version of that fight, and <laughs> it's coming up next week. Chelsea versus and back in form, uh, Liverpool. And now you get to what do you think are your chances of beating Liverpool? off the backs of being Arsenal this week. Like, like, you really get to see... This is where Lukaku... Yeah, he did good yeah. this week, but... This is where we find out, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, these are going to be the tests, like, you know, against the topmost teams, like, what we can do, uh, what this team can do. Um, we've had a great record under Tuchel of beating uh, every top team we've come across, but... You know, new season. Liverpool looks really sharp and strong. They've got all their big guns back. Um, so this is going to be a proper test. It's going to be in front of a, you know, Anfield's going to be full. So uh, I feel we can beat them, but, you know, equally they can beat I, I really can't. You know, I don't think any, any team goes into that game as a favourite. Yeah. What do you think about it, Lee? I mean, personally, I think Chelsea have the edge. Um, yeah. I just think they're stronger 1 to 11 kind of thing. But mm-hmm. like Neil said, you can't yeah. say for certain any team's going to win this. Um, right. If Liverpool show up, if they're on their, you know, on form and you know, Salah and Mane are firing, they're going to cause problems. So, um, I mean, Jota took his goal well at the weekend as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, it should be a good game to watch as a neutral. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I think Chelsea will probably just have the edge. I'll give Chelsea the edge in their midfield, like, uh, yeah. like because Liverpool is experimenting now with Samikas and Elliot, but Elliot's 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 in Elliot's their in midfield, the attacking midfield, yeah, yeah, he's in their midfield, but and Samikas is uh, replacing uh, what's his name, I'm Robertson. Robertson. Robertson, Robertson right now. So it's just like he might like, be back for this yeah. game. Yeah, he might be back, but I don't know. If if uh, Liverpool is going to have an experienced midfield mm. this weekend, and I'll base it on that, you know, like like whoever puts out the most experience, if if Liverpool can match the experience in their midfield with Chelsea's, then it's more even. Like then, but if they do, then it's hard for me to call. But if they don't, then I'll just, in my mind, say Chelsea. You know? I actually feel like you know. If we really are talking about best 11s, like if everybody is fit, I think Liverpool slightly edges us. You would say. Um, uh, especially with the kind of world-class quality they have. And they have like players who've done it in like, the league. Through, like no, they have, have the work, experience of like losing you don't out have of 38th league season. No, we do, but we don't have as many as them. You so, just want Champions League and added a player to it. No, that is all fine. But we are talking about you know a team that has got two near hundred point seasons. They have the entirety of that court. They didn't and last year. No, no, no. But they have they have pretty much the entire team from there, and they now have added. 
But now Wijnaldum. Wijnaldum's gone. Wijnaldum's the only one gone. And they have added uh, Thiago, Jota and Konate. So if anything, See, I... they've, they've, you know, Thiago's a world-class player. I mean, you know, he didn't have a great season last season. But, exactly. But like, so did a lot of the guys we bought. So Thiago was on but the I... bench for Spain. If they put an 18-year-old Pedri on Pedri. in front of him, like Thiago, he looks good. I've been following Thiago a long time. He looks good. But sometimes he could just be there, you know? He suits certain games. Yeah. I don't know if he suits clubs, the traditional club. You know what we think about the club yeah. style of play? I don't, I don't know if he suits that. But maybe, you know, the way that club is now using Harvey Elliott, uh, maybe that and Thiago, maybe he is changing from his, mm. you know, his prototype way of playing. In yeah. the, that Although, position. Naby Keita's back in the yeah. team now, which right, yeah. he wasn't really getting in last year. Yeah. Um, so and he's, he's sort of good. Into the, the gap as well. But yeah, he did. Yeah. I think he's been disappointing since he signed for Liverpool. He didn't really show what he's shown for Red Bull before, mm. but he's he needs that consistent run in the team. And I don't think he's when getting... they had Fabinho and Wijnaldum and Henderson all like yeah. fit, like you know, he, he wasn't going to get past those guys at the time. So I think there's more responsibility on him this season. Um, he's getting injured a lot. Yeah. No, it'll be interesting to see if he can stay fit. And Oxley chamberlain as well, there's more pressure on him now to perform. Oh, there's um, pressure on him, but uh, uh, he's not on those guys' level that you just mentioned. Uh, he's not even no. on Kader's level to me. And I think you're right, Kader couldn't play because those three guys were playing ahead of him. But now one of those guys is out. I think Kader's the next obvious mm. person to, to step in front, yeah. even in front of, uh, in front of uh, Alcantara. Like, I think um, I don't think we'll see Harvey Elliott or Simakas in the starting lineup this weekend. Yeah, right. I agree. I think they'll put the they'll put all their experience back in. They might even throw like Milner if in the centre mid if he's fit as well. They, they tend to do that for the big games. Right. So they're, they're going to try to get his experience, but Milner I think is falling off. And I don't know if he's mm-hmm. falling off or he hasn't played as much as he used to play. Even though it's yeah. weird, if he should have played, if there's any time he should have played was like last season. Because that's when they needed like midfielders, because mm. midfielders are playing yeah. defenders. I think it'll be Cater Henderson plus one more, which would either be Fabina, uh, would either be uh, Milner or Oxley Chamberlain, maybe. All right. I think it'll be Fabinho, no? Like as the he's not fit. I don't think is he. Oh, oh I think sorry. he was yeah. on the bench, but he, I don't think he got in the game. Maybe they were resting. Yeah. He didn't. I he think didn't, they were resting. He hasn't started, he hasn't started a game yet. So then, yeah, he might. Have, yeah, I think they were just resting him. For this week, which is tough to just go out and play a game. They could be, yeah. Yeah, so I think I squad depth wise, we 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 are we are better, um, and I think so. If it if it does come down to a draw and it's getting a leggy game and you need somebody from the bench, like if you look at our bench right now, it's it's an amazing sight. Like you have Thiago Silva, um, Hakim Ziyech, Werner, Pulisic, Hudson Odoi. Uh, Kovacic, so the, that bench, Chilwell, that bench is looking really solid now. Talking about Chelsea bench? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> yeah, a Chelsea bench, they <laughs> talk about it, bro. And we might add, as you said, like we might add Jules Kunde. And this, there's a lot of rumors about getting Saul Niguez from Atletico Madrid on mm-hmm. loan. Yeah. Apparently both Chelsea and Manchester United are in for, uh, for the player. Yeah, I don't think we should get him because he sounds like an attacking midfielder. We need a defensive midfielder. He he plays deeper, but he has a lot of drive. Like he will yeah. get on the ball and go forwards. Right. Um, but he is he is an all rounder, really. Yeah. I mean, you've, got, you've got to be able to defend when you play for Simeone. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like Simeone does this thing where he'll play his midfielders everywhere. Right. So yeah, maybe he can do like we need somebody like that too. Like um, I don't know, not that. Keen, but yeah, I, yeah, I see that. Have a, I see that room. I'd rather get uh, <laughs> the, the guy from Wolves, Nevers, yeah, mm. yeah, we, you know, somebody that's been in the league. We don't have to like acclimate, Still the like, yeah, what's your make uh, Solskjaer takes too long to get players in, you know, or to take a chance. Well, you, you'll get a good look at him this Sunday, you're playing Wolves. Yeah, we're playing Wolves, right? We're playing the best team with no points in the league. Like, (laughs) Wolves versus Leicester and Wolves versus Spurs were so fucking entertaining. 
like the chances that they create and to watch Tanganga, who had a world-class game against Raheem Sterling, like bounce off Adama Traore, it like was was bananas. Like, and then even like it's so many you know, that game. There's so many dope players in the league. Like when you even think about Spurs, like like I mentioned Bergwijn last week, and Martin was like, no, no, but Bergwijn just needs to learn how to finish. But besides that, like how do you think that Spurs teams look? Without Harry Kane, with all that speed, Son, Bergwijn, like it's it's Mora it, as well. Mora, it's like like you you have to play Kane because he can score. But man, th- th- like to play Mourinho ball, that's what you need. Mourinho, uh, it's just, it's like those guys that could just fly through, you know. And if if you're playing all defensive football and mm. reactive football like it's well, like Leicester yeah. with Vardy you know yeah apparently Spurs made a bid for Adama Traore but got rejected yeah well you mean uh <laughs> Nuno did yeah Nuno tried to get his players like I made that guy a player he failed <laughs> in this league before and I want him here yeah you can see why I mean I think they there was um I'm listening I'm just open for, like, yeah Mm-hmm. I'm listening. There was a stat for most successful dribbles right. this, so far this season in the two games, and number one and number three were both Adama Traore. I believe that. <laughs> I've watched those games. Like I, like, I might watch that Wolves game again. <laughs> like, that's how exciting that dude was. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Spurs, Spurs were a little bit lucky to come away with the win there as well. Like, Wolves created some chances. Do you, and Spurs. I don't think that was a penalty. Yeah. If you right, watch it again, right? Goalkeeper comes out and he stops. Uh, uh, Delhi is coming towards him, plays the ball around him, and then his momentum takes him into the keeper. And yeah. then they call that a penalty. But the penalty, the keeper never hit him. Mm. He, he, came, he, also, he also didn't and, get out of his way. <laughs> yeah, but he's not supposed to, is he? Like He's moved towards him, and then Delhi's hit him. So it's still, by the letter of the law, it's still a penalty. Not really. <laughs> I, it's like, you're the attacking player. You hit the goalkeeper, and the goalkeeper gets blamed for the penalty. It's supposed you, if the goalkeeper is standing still, I can understand it, but the keeper has moved. And like, then stopped so that he doesn't him. foul the person. Mm. And then Delhi chipped the ball one way, and he's going this way. And it, like Delhi's not going to even get that ball back. No, it's a smart penalty, um, but I think it's still a penalty. Mm. I disagree, but they, they, they put it away. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, 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 they won, and Nuno's doing what they need to do to get them wins. But Spurs look. Ian, you're not excited. Fa- you're not. You don't fancy the the Jamaican winning penalties. Oh, because 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 you got Martin, dreads. Martin he's not Jamaican. He looks like Bob Marley. <laughs> 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 yeah, like he looks like Daly with dreads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He looks like Daly Alley with dreads. He doesn't look like a Jamaican. <laughs> hilarious. Uh. Let's let's just we, we didn't get to cover like uh, a few things because there's so much shit going on like uh, like uh, Grealish getting his first goal for City and City going off against Norwich. That's two big losses in a row for Norwich. They've like just given up goals. They gave up three against Liverpool and now they're giving up five against a City that had a scoring problem. But now do they have a score problem? Because they seem to have solved it. They scored all the goals they couldn't score last week, this week. Yeah, I and think the worst thing that could happen for Norwich was City losing that first game. Right. It just made them angry. <laughs> yeah. And Gabriel Jesus didn't score, but he got man of the match and he had some assists. And Kyle Walker making those Pogba-like passes, splitting up the Norwich defense. And when I say splitting the Norwich defense, what defense? They had no defense. Was this, <laughs> they played... Like a drunk person who's laying on in front of the club with their legs open, 
It was just like, <laughs> they just let anything in and through and over around. And uh, Leeds Everton kind of discussed that lightly. But, uh, you know, they have four points. Everton does. Leeds have one. Uh, Crystal Palace, 0 uh, 0 with Brentford. Uh, uh, Patrick Vieira gets his first point of his first uh, uh, f- first points in the Premier League against, against a promoted team. I think Crystal Palace had the edge in the game, but not by much. But uh, good for uh, Patrick Vieira. Uh, and Bentaki proved that no matter who's coaching him, he can only come close to scoring. That's <laughs> he's, he's just famous for just coming close to scoring, like, like heading balls over the bar, off his shoulder, mm-hmm. from his head to his shoulder to kill the impact of the header. It's just, I, I, I think, I don't believe, I didn't believe that witchcraft existed until I seen Benteke play. There's no way there's not a curse on Benteke. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. And then we were all texting when Villa played Newcastle and Danny mm-hmm. Ings, that, that Wayne Rooney bicycle, mm-hmm. Versus Newcastle, just yeah. bananas, and uh, trying to see Liverpool, Burnley. We did, we kind of talked about Liverpool. I just want to. We talked about West Ham City. So and we we I was asking about Man City versus. Well, shit! I asked you about Liverpool versus Chelsea. But what do you guys think about Man City versus Arsenal? I think another bad loss for Arsenal is coming up. Um, I think they're going to be one of the teams who've got zero points from three games. I think that's almost certain, surely. Um, I mean, it would be a great confidence boost if they could get something out of this game. They need it, but I don't think they're going to get it. I think we need it too. Like, we need somebody needs to take some points off City. So, so, so I'd rather uh, Teta do it. But do you think they'll, somebody will? Do you think nah. that somebody will be Arsenal? Uh, no, nah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, you know, but they need to completely have like the entire, half the COVID, uh, like Ben White needs to make a trip to the Man City training center. <laughs> to <laughs> take like out a lot of these cancer. guys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take a lot of their guys out. But I actually find it a little interesting, you know, how the way City has been scoring, like they scored so many goals last game. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know how it's going to work out if the fact that they keep scoring these goals, is that going to convince them that they don't need to pull the trigger on Harry Kane or Ronaldo? Because um, that could be a little bit of a, uh, you know, maybe it, maybe it is for real or maybe it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a mirage. What's funny about that is last week they didn't score any goals. So then... Yeah it puts uh, Tottenham in the strong position as far as raising the money <laughs> to sell Kane. And then this week they fight, they score five and then Tottenham's like, shit, should we have taken their offer yeah. from last week? And we'll see what happens against Arsenal to like, like the games and the, and the goals is going to swing the pendulum in each other's yeah. favor based yeah. on, you know, so do you think next week when the transfer window, where do you think Harry Kane will be Lee? I mean, if you'd asked me a week ago or two weeks ago, I'd say City, but I think Levy's going to stand strong. I mean, he played off the bench at the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if it does happen, it'll be on the day. It'll be on deadline day. It'll be on the 31st that it happens. It'll be a week today. Um, so we'll see. I mean, it'll be interesting discussing this next week because the window literally shuts at midnight on the 31st next Tuesday. So... Um, and you'll be on one and a half hours with us after, right? <laughs> yeah, as the deals as the deals are being confirmed, the paperwork's always late on those things. But right. um, yeah, I think I think Levy will sell him so late that he won't get a replacement. I think I, I think there's a good chance he may now stay at Tottenham, but if not, he'll go very late. Very late. Mm. What, what do you think, Neil, about this? Yeah, I, th- I think I agree. I think he will stay at uh, Tottenham. Because now moves. having having posted so hard, you can't now scale back what you want. Say that uh, again. I mean, they've posted, you know, they've taken a hard stance that no, 150 million is not good enough. You got to pay more. And um, I don't think City are willing to go above that amount for, um, for a striker who's 
just about a year near his 30s. So, um, and essentially they have to save face to like they can't really sell him now uh, at a lower price. They can't now say that you know, we are selling him at 120 million. I mean, they can now that Mbappe is who's way more valuable is evaluation by Real Madrid is 130. Okay, so about that, a couple of tweets came out just now. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is, so the Qatari family owns uh, PSG, right? Right. So there's this mem member of the Qatari family who's been tweeting all day. Uh -huh. <laughs> he goes, if you agree to the specified price, contact us or complete the season with the golfer. That's a big uh, Gareth Bale. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> and then he goes on to say stuff like, um, you know, he says something like, uh, yeah, because I have to like do Google Translate because he's mm -hmm. he's tweeting in Arabic. Okay. So I have to like Google Translate <laughs> this, every one of these. And, and I think I've. But he's acting like he's got some type of power. If you don't sell him now, he goes for free. So all your tweets would be thrown in your face in Arabic and translated English. So he says it costs a lot, year. a very large transfer amount plus high salary. Have you lost confidence in him? Did the club president admit that he made a mistake? Fix your windows before you throw stones at others. I don't understand that. Read that one again, please. He says it costs a lot, a very large transfer amount plus mm -hmm. a high salary. Have you lost? Have you lost confidence in him? Oh, I think he's talking about Hazard. <laughs> yeah, he's like, did the club president admit that he made a mistake? Fix your windows before you throw stones at others. And he's attached a picture of an ambulance. So just, just to make it clear. This all sounds very professional from a club official. Well, he's not. I mean. Is he really an official? Like, I don't know. He's in the family. He's from the family. Yeah. So, I mean, he's, so I guess he's an official. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's like Pogba's brother or Rib Rib Ribio's mom starting fights <laughs> in the stands. He's funny, like, though. He's like, no one yeah. forced you to pay about 100 million euros for a player as a prank and then complain about the financial crisis. Who is he talking about? Hundred million. Yeah. Is that hazard? Yeah, probably hazard. Maybe, yeah. Oh, he's he's training his. Yeah. Well, you should know how much hazard cost, Neil. Well, <laughs> hazard when he when he was um, sold, it was reported to be uh, one hundred and fifteen million euros. Mm -hmm. uh, but there were court documents that came out in um, Belgium because mm -hmm. hazard has a carry on sale from every club before him. So the first club that he was at. Mm -hmm. Even before Lil, like when he was like 15, 16, yeah, yeah. that has a clause which gives them a percentage for every future uh, sale. So you mean there's a lien on hazard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lien on hazard from like, even before he signed his uh, first professional contract. So, and then that club went into some bribery scandal or something, mm -hmm. fell into something like that, some corruption. So they had to release their financial documents in open court. Right. And that had the value of the, you know, what they got from the hazard sale. Mm -hmm. And that was a percentage. So the people, you know, they did, they did the math. And apart, according to that, it seems like the sale was actually around 150 million uh, pounds. Oh, shit. So it's way bigger than what was uh, initially reported. But anyway. But, but, but what this guy is attacking Real Madrid for making an offer to PSG for one of their players. It's like, it's very saying it's defensive. not good enough. He's like, come back when you have more. The first one, yeah, right. But you you don't have this power, bro. Like they, <laughs> you this this contract is running out as we speak. Like yeah, but I guess that's their flex. Then I guess we can't really compute. Like as you know, if you're, we, you're fake yeah. tough. You're taking off your shirt. You're walking around acting like you want to fight, but you don't want <laughs> to fight. You don't want to smoke because you, you, could, you can talk. You got a whole year to tweet. Then after that. No, but, but maybe their flex is like, you know what? Fuck it. We, we, we're going to keep the player for an extra year and let him go away for, the, for a free. And, and then you look like an idiot. 
but they don't care. I guess that's the whole point. But I think PSG not if they, does not if they win the Champions League with him. Yeah. yeah. I think PSG does care. They they want they've been like the the main guy at PSG doesn't want to lose him. Like he's like he's really been. I've never seen. Uh, uh, he's been proposing to him, like, like but, more more than, you know. But if he is gonna go, I think if you give their owners the choice between money and Mbappe for another year, they don't care about the money. They'll keep Mbappe for another year. So I think that's what they're saying. Like the you, you need to give us a fuck a fuck you offer. So, uh, uh, apart from that, we are not gonna we are not we are not talking. I'll play with the golfer for a year. <laughs> I don't think much is expected from Real Madrid this season. Yeah. I'll play with the golfer. Yeah. You know what? I'll play with the golfer and then I'll have an excuse to fire Ancelotti. And then <laughs> we hire Zidane back, which I think Zidane is coming back. And then definitely Mbappe would want to play for Zidane. And so will Pogba. And so would probably Camavinga. They're all French. And whoever else is for free, and then, mm-hmm. then, then, boom! You have you have some title chases. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens here. It, yeah, football contracts normally don't run down to the wire, and like I think a lot of people's future and a lot of teams' future is running on the thing that now people are gonna run down their contracts, and they're not talking or negotiating, and they're playing for their teams. And they're just like, and it's too co- much of a coincidence that it's three French players, you know, who you know probably talk to each other, yeah, speak mm-hmm. the same language, and have desires to want to play at the highest level for the biggest teams. It's just, it's just too much of a coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll see. Well, it's 7.15. Mm-hmm. You want to post this thing? You want Aaron? to uh, be able to like get back to his family and shit and his kid. Uh, thank you, Aaron Brungard for, uh, you know, doing your thing and producing this episode. Lee, if there's anything you want to plug? Um, no, it's 3.15 a.m. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plug myself, uh, plug my <laughs> nightlight in. <laughs> plug your bed. All right. <laughs> and what about you, Neil? Um, it's a good game. Uh, good a really good overall week for Chelsea uh, Academy products. I want to say that. Mm-hmm. Livermento got them out of the match. Reese James, Mason Mott got goals and assists for Chelsea. Conor Gallagher, out of the match for Crystal Palace. Gehi yeah. got a, Mark Gehi got a, a clean sheet. Uh, Levi Colwell in the championship, he's been doing great. as He's a centre-back. He's been doing great in defence, but he scored a 94th minute winner. Mm. which um, had some limbs in the crowd. And Tammy Abraham, man of the match debut for Roma, two assists. Yeah, he got a goalkeeper so, sent off and two assists. <laughs> two assists, yeah, hit the yeah. bar. So, yeah. yeah, it's looking... It's a little sad because now a lot of these players are not with us. But, you know, good yeah, to see. Would... I have a lot of, like, emotional investment in a lot of these guys, so it's good to no, see them you. do well. I feel you. Yeah. You're doing okay without them, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just about. <laughs> and and they and they made you money so that you could buy people. It's not like it's it's like it's That's a trade off. Like like somebody did a calculation. I think it was uh, Carragher, and he's like, you with all the money that you spent, I think you were like minus forty mil. Actually, right now we're in the positive. Like we're in the four million profit. And I think if the Zuma sale happens, but then we get Jules Conde overall, mm-hmm. we're going to be at around 30 mil uh, net uh, net expenditure, which is for the season. nothing for the season. Yeah, which is crazy. It's which crazy. Is crazy. Like, I All think, the money I, that you spent over the last few years. I, I, I think by the time the numbers eventually come in, it will be an unprecedented number of a team selling that much amount w- w- worth of players mm-hmm. which were not needed by the squad. Like, you know, you'll have high sales like Aston Villa sold Krilich, but that's their best player. You know, we sold Hazard, but that was our, you know, our best player. So getting like close to 160 million without affecting the strength of this, like without taking out any players who are relevant to the squad right, is right. actually uh, pretty unprecedented. 
Yeah, you have a pretty solid business model. Like everybody thinks like Abramovich is just some rich guy, billionaire, oligarch that just throws money into the club, but he's not he's not there to just throw money away. At least not now. Maybe he did in the beginning. I think before like, FFP he did he used to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like we're gonna really 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 run a business here. Yeah. And we figured it out and this is what we're doing. So that's good. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to be at the Escondido Comedy Club. So, Neil, I'm going to be back in San Diego. Oh, cool. Grand, uh, yeah. The Grand Comedy Club in Escondido, mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday. It's the 27th and the 28th of August, I think. So, I don't know when you people are going to be listening to this, but that's or watching. Uh, you, on YouTube, like, subscribe. Uh, my Instagram is at Ian Edwards Comic. And my Twitter is at Ian Edwards Comic. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Martin did not get to celebrate his... Uh, his Spurs win. I hope he come can join us next week, and they lose, and then uh, <laughs> he never gets a chance to, to to like like relish the fact that you know they got six points. Who are they? Who are they we playing? Talk about his, yeah, let's see who he's they're playing. They're playing Watford, so he he might win. He might win, but it'd yeah. be nice if they draw. You yeah. know, <laughs> drop some points that they should win. Let's hope it's the Watford from match day one, not the Watford from match day two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Come on, White Ma Watford match day one. Uh, but peace, y'all. Be good to each other. Leave some comments. And, you know, maybe we'll read your comments and stuff like that and uh, yeah. give you a shout out. We always appreciate it. All right, y'all. One. Yeah.